Second, um, let's go on the record in the decision phase. Kevin Sampson, 1046 LLC, trade is eat, drink, listen, 327 Gay Street. This is uh, uh, October 25th, 2012. Uh, we have heard from uh, the applicant today with counsel. Uh, they submitted several documents, including a notice of um, or meeting minutes from the Jonestown Planning Council, um, a letter of non-opposition uh, of the project with some kind of, uh, with condition that additional community outreach be performed. We received a letter uh, from Mr. Sampson, the applicant, uh, to Ms. Rosalind Hannibal Booker from Maryland Center for Veterans Education and Training Center, a letter from the applicant to Dr. Marie Washington, president of the East Baltimore Community Corporation, and emails, uh, to an email to uh, the president and CEO of Healthcare for the Homeless and the CEO of, or owner of the Sleep Inn. Uh, board heard from Mr. Sampson. Mr. Sampson indicates uh, he'd like to revitalize the neighborhood and that uh, capital investment is one way to do it. Uh, he did make some, obviously, made some phone calls, wrote some letters, and attempted to, uh, to participate meaningfully in outreach. I'll note that most of these requests were, most of this work was done in the summertime when uh, a lot of groups aren't necessarily available um, to meet as they might be during the rest of the year. Nevertheless, um, he did meet uh, with the Jonestown Planning Council. Uh, he did make some attempts to speak to the community, and for whatever reason, uh, he was unable to uh, connect with some of them. Uh, there appears to be some confusion as to what Mr. Uh, Sampson believed his project was going to entail versus what others believe it's going to entail. Um, we heard from Director Farrow of the Mayor's uh, Health Office um, talking again about the homeless shelter, uh, Catholic charities, and other affected uh, organizations uh, that they believe would um, be harmed, that uh, there would be a health risk there um, if there was uh, an additional licensee so close to their facilities. We heard from Dr. Jack Pierce of the Maryland Center for Veterans Education and Training Incorporated. Uh, he originally believed that there would be a restaurant, that it would be about food, and all the employees of these agencies would love to have an extra place to eat, but that he believed that it became more apparent to him that uh, with the live entertainment and everything else that, that, that this was planning uh, to be a nightclub or a bar. Uh, and for that reason, he believed that that would be injurious uh, to uh, the residents or the, the, or the patients of his facility. Uh, we also heard from Mr. Driscoll of the Office of the Council President, um, and we received the letter from the Council President um, who believes that a BD7 license with live entertainment in the specific area would unnecessarily harm those individuals seeking treatment for addiction and underserved and at-risk populations working diligently to make life uh, better for themselves. Additionally, uh, Councilman Carl Stokes in the exhibit, as the first exhibit by the protestants, uh, believes that their community leaders there have expressed their disinterest in this entrepreneurial endeavor. Uh, and again, ha having a restaurant and bar with live entertainment near the juvenile detention center may prove to be hazardous and not a viable capital investment to the community. Uh, I, I won't read all of these letters into uh, evidence, um, but I think it's clear from the weight of the evidence we have, uh, we have to consider several factors under Article 2B, Section 10202A. The first factor is the public need and desire for the license. Now, public is subject to interpretation, like any other word is. Um, in, a, in a situation where we don't have a standard residential population, we don't have rows, neat rows of grow houses lined up so we know exactly who the neighbors are, then our scope broadens. And 
The public, in fact, can be the residents of facilities. The public can, can in fact, be employees of the facilities. In this case, um, we ha don't have a problem determining under um, a, by a preponderance of the evidence that there is not a public need and desire when we are receiving correspondence of almost universal opposition uh, by groups like the one led by Dr. Washington, the East Baltimore Community Corporation, by Councilman Carl Stokes, who's, who's, who represents the residents of the district and indicates he receives phone calls fr from the neighborhood, from the Maryland Center for Veterans Education and Training, from our council president, who obviously does outreach, from testimony from the mayor's, to, from the mayor's office. This is obviously something that, that it's the wrong place, it's the wrong fit. We're also asked to consider other factors, including the impact on the general health, safety, and welfare of the community. And that includes issues about crime, traffic, parking, or convenience. I don't think that crime, traffic, parking, and convenience are at the top of our list here. We're able to concern ourselves with other necessary factors. While there could be some crime that could result as a result, of, you know, that could be argued as a result of the license, I think the operative word here is general health of the community. And the, the, the health, the general health, the board believes, of, of this neighborhood is relatively fragile because it, there are so many at-risk persons who are there to seek treatment and not to, uh, and not to further uh, injure themselves. Based on that, we do find under 10202A that there is not a public need and desire for this license. There is no impact on existing licensees. There is uh, a potential uh, uniqueness of services to be offered, but that is outweighed uh, by the public need and desire for the license, and what we believe will be a significant impact on the general health, safety, and welfare of this community. Consequently, we'll go ahead and deny the request for transfer. Thank you very much. We're off the record. Thank you.